Good to see you everyone. My name is Robbie Howell and we're gonna do something slightly different today. I've been asked on a number of occasions how I create the visual assets that I use in my builds, namely the bonus boxes, the unique units, things of that nature. And since, as I mentioned in my Scots video, it was recently my birthday, I felt like in the spirit of giving, I would give a present to all of you guys, namely making public the assets that I use to put together my builds. If you want to use all of them, they are available down in the description below. You will be taken to this page on the online vector art program Figma. I use Figma for everything theory crafting related and besides it's a fantastic free piece of software unless Adobe ruins it. They acquired it recently. Hopefully they do not make it paid to use but it is a really exceptional piece of software, very intuitive. This page will be available in the description down below. You can open it in Figma, make an account for free, and be theory crafting with the best of them in no time at all. And I figured I'd do a little bit of a demo for you guys right now to show you how I use each and every one of the different pieces that's on display here. Let's start with a bonus box. All civilizations need a good bonus box, don't they? I've modeled these after some of the older style ones, not the same style you'd see in the original Age of Kings, nor the one you see now in DE, but kind of a middle ground between readable and classic looking that I think works really, really nicely. Uh, all the text is alterable, so you can click into any single one and adjust it as you wish. Like for example, if I wanna give a bonus, um, Vils, villagers have uh, plus 50% swag. Yeah, you can just put down something like that. And if you have a really long one, for example, then what you do is where it wraps around, I just uh, do a line break and I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I found eight spaces, that's the optimal amount to make it look correct. And you may have to like adjust these sizings a little bit and whenever you do, you can just shift the other uh, fillable text boxes around as you desire. Um, now, once you have that done, you can obviously fill in that it's an X, Y, Z civilization. This one is obviously a turd civilization. Uh, you can fill out the civ name, but then I also here and here have fillable ensign icons. Now what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna duplicate each one of these, uh, and then you will go over to fill, hit this little image icon, and then you can fill it with whatever image you want. I'm gonna put my enclave signet in because, wouldn't you know it, this video is sponsored by my own Kickstarter for my tabletop RPG Enclave. I have a pre-launch going right now. I'll be mentioning it a couple more times before then, but if you haven't already, please, please, please take the time to follow the link below and click on the notify me on launch button. Even if you have no interest in the game and don't want to contribute to the campaign, just clicking this will help me a lot with my advertising and outreach efforts and won't cost you a cent. A tiny little present back to me in return for this present to you all, which I I really do hope will actually be something that ends up being useful to you all. So yeah, you put the little civilization emblem drop down here and here, and once that's there and that's in place, you can, uh, mongoloids. Uh, you have access to a lovely little bonus box. You can fill out the unique technologies, unique units, team bonus, etc., using the exact same formatting that I've demonstrated up here. Here, though I'd recommend only using four spaces and a line break if your team bonus needs to be two lines long. Now let's move down to here. This is where I put together an ensign. And typically the way I do this is I use assets that I find online. In fact, it might be easier if I just illustrate it to you now. So let's go over to a, a recent build that I did, the Welsh. So for the Welsh ensign, here's what I did. It consists of the following components. So I have this image here. This image, as it turns out, is only the outermost rim. The way I did that is I added a stroke right here and I changed the sizing of the stroke to take more or less of the shield. But you'll see I only used enough to have it make like a fitting rim for the shield itself. Uh, then I put a fill effect for like a transparent wood grain. Uh, I found this nice image of a dragon. You can adjust all of the specs of these as well, like the exposure of the image and things like that using this little pop out right here. And then underneath all of that, I put a base circle and made a gradient on it using this tool here in the drop down menu. If I didn't have the gradient, it would look like this, which looks substantially worse. I'm sure you will agree 
So let's uh, undo that, thank you. Uh, and after I did all that, I put a mask on top of all of it that allows it to be a nice, neat circle. If the mask wasn't there, it would look like this. And that looks like doo-doo. If you want to learn anything more about any of these different components of Figma, there are a gajillion tutorials out there online. What you do is you go down to this little export button right here, ex and uh, I'll click here, export Welsh Ensign, and then it will just appear, bingo, bango, down in my download section to be pulled up later. Not really easy for me to show that though, unfortunately. Okay, now that we have that out of the way and you kind of have an idea of how to make a civilization ensign. So that's what all this is for. The red and the blue squares are there just for measuring aids. You can make it so that they can't be seen by clicking on these two little eyeballs here and then flick them back on if you want. And as mentioned, all of these different components are grouped together and you can easily copy and paste these groups however you want so that you can use the same template on the same page and just kind of copy it and paste it all over the place and just make all sorts of happy little civilizations however you like. Nice and easy. So now that we have our ensign done and we also have our bonus box, we go over to the tech tree. This one's very, very intuitive. All you do is you take this first group. This is a group of four X's and I usually move it into place, and then I just start copying the entire group and spreading it out. Once you do, you can take individual X's and just stick them wherever you want to, all over the unit and tech icons. Now, when it comes to things like your unique unit, what you'll do is you'll go into this little box here, you'll edit the name, and then you'll edit the picture. And this, again, takes a little bit of knowledge of Figma. It requires making a simple mask and putting together a little graphic, typically based on images that I find online. Let's do a quick one now. All right, so I'm gonna have a second one here because they all have a black background. Then I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna fill it with an image. I normally like to have one with a removed background, but let's just use a piece of art from my upcoming game, Enclave, shall we? How about that one? That one looks pretty freaking cool. Now what I'll do is now that I have the piece of art in place, I will size it to whatever dimensions I want, hopefully to make him look nice and center, but you'll notice it's way off. What we do then is we create another rectangle here. We group these three together down on the bottom left of your screen, and I hit this button near the top that says create mask. This will make it such that this bottom most rectangle will kind of serve to hide the other two that are stacked on top of it, meaning that I can rescale this image and it stays within the bounds of that bottom most rectangle. Super duper nice. I would recommend using an online background removing software to make sure you have that nice black background to give it that authentic Age of Empires feel. Then you can go into this dropdown and change the exposure and the saturation and a couple of other things like the green red ratio and blah -de blah -de blah and make it look all sorts of cool and awesome. Now that we have done all that, we go down to the unique technologies. These you can just edit with text. Very, very easy. And just as with the Ensign, once you have done all of that, you just click the entire group. This would be uh, the group titled Tech Tree, which you can see up here, and you just click on the Export button on the bottom right of your screen. Okay, with all that being said, last thing to quickly touch upon with you guys are these little icons here. Sometimes you will obviously want to put new regional common units, buildings, that sort of thing into your build. And because of that, I have a couple of different icons that I like to use for different types of units, technologies, etc. Now the unique unit and all of the commons are ones that currently exist in game, at least according to the AOE2 wiki, which is where I pull most of these assets from and adapt them for these purposes. But I've started trying to use other colors to represent different things like regional units and buildings that I'm trying to promote more and more with my own builds. And I've even snuck in this unique technology icon a couple of times in other builds like my Polynesians build. I'm not using it for every castle unique technology, but for technologies that a sieve happens to have uniquely that aren't relegated to the castle, I'm using this exclusively now. And you're welcome to as well. I find it to be quite colorful and a fun way to instantly identify the type of unit technology or building in question just at a glance. And these, just like everything else, can be copied and moved around and you can change the names and you can give them a nice little image using masks like I showed you before. Easy peasy, squeeze the lemon. Now once you have all these put together, you can share them out however you want, but but obviously, I like to put all of these assets into a spreadsheet document that people can peruse through as they like. Not only do I find this a very reasonable and understandable way of presenting information, but it also gives me all sorts of availability to put notes sections and links to sources and all sorts of other lovely stuff. If you guys really want, let me know down in the comments section below, and I'm happy to share my spreadsheet formatting publicly as well for you guys to copy and use for your own projects. 
And that just about does it. A birthday gift from me to you. Go on to Figma, copy this for yourself, use it for whatever Age of Empires projects you like, and make sure to share them publicly as well in the Discord linked down below. I'm gonna make sure that all of this is linked in that Discord channel as well so that it is easily accessible if this video doesn't come up easily for you. So make sure to bop in there to not only meet all sorts of other awesome theory crafters, but also to get an opportunity to chat with me in my weekly open forum. The next one of which I believe is this this coming Wednesday. And that should be it from me for now. Hopefully you guys enjoy this smaller, more unusual video. Once again, make sure to go check out Enclave if you haven't already. Please make sure to hit the notify me on launch button and share it around with anyone you know who might be interested in TTRPGs or is just willing to spread the word to those they know as well. As always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. I hope these assets are of use to you. And as always, my name is Robbie Howell. And ciao for now.